Hello and welcome to Bevy Basics Hierarchy Edition. This video was intended to be uh, serialization, deserialization, uh, followed by a video on scenes. But with the release of 0 0.8 and the subsequent changes that it made to uh, visibility and transforms and how the hierarchy uh, components work, I thought I should bump those videos to the top of the list. And with the changes made to reflect, I sort of pushed that down the list a little bit because I want to make sure I understand it before I make a video. So that means it's time for a mini series or another mini series. This series is going to be consisting of three videos <laughs> about Bevy's entity hierarchy system and how that works. Uh, th that'll be the first video is how Bevy's flat data structure is then layered into the hierarchy system. The next video will be about the visibility struct and how that is viewed by the hierarchy system and has an impact. And finally, a video about transforms and their place in the hierarchy. There may be future subsequent videos, such as one on Bevy's quat struct used by transforms or other parts of the hierarchy that people request will be added to the playlist but may not get bumped to the top of the to-do list. So if there's anything you would like to see, please leave a comment below and, and I'll make sure it's added to the to-do list at the very least, if not bumped up. In this video, I'll cover Bevy's hierarchy, how Bevy converts a, its flat data structure of the ECS into the tiered data structure of the hierarchy that most people envision when they picture a game engine. I will then cover the parent-child struct that Bevy uses in order to do this and then the commands that you use to interact with and change the hierarchy. Bevy uses what is referred to as a flat data structure to store its entity. All this really means is there is no difference in the importance of any specific entities in Bevy, and they can all be accessed in big O one time. Entity one is exactly the same as entity two, very much like an array. This flat data approach allows Bevy to be fast and efficient when it comes to fetching components, because there is no need to traverse long chains of references and there is no risk of breaking these change chains and making unreachable data when removing or reusing entities in the world. Hierarchies, however, is not a flat data structure and in instead a linked one. This would be the equivalent of each entity containing a reference to its parent and all its children. Because of how convenient the hierarchy archetype is, Bevy has provided some components that allow this hierarchy links structure to be flattened out and stored in the ECS. As you can see with this diagram here, using Bevy, all the entities can be accessed directly from Bevy, whereas in the hierarchy, it is possible to have chains that need to be traversed. It also means that, as you can see, there is no way to remove an entity that would prevent you from accessing a separate ent any of the other entities. Whereas in the hierarchy, you could remove, say, this entity, and then this entity is no longer reachable from the hierarchy's root. Bevy does this by adding parent and children components to entities. This allows for an entity component to have a component attached that indicates what falls below and above it in the hierarchy. As seen again in this diagram, the Bevy hierarchy allows you to access any entity, then get its parent entity if it has one, which then links to a separate entity that can be requested to get its parent or children. This allows for the structure to be built from the pre-existing flat entity structure. This obviously takes more compute than having the structure pre-built, but results in it not being possible to break the entity system outside of having floating links, but this won't prevent any entity from being accessed. This also, when combined with Bevy's quick and reliable query system, means that you can quickly query for all root nodes or all leaf nodes using the respective queries below. You can query for the entities without parents, which means that they must be a root node, or with parents, but without children, which means that they have to be a leaf node at the end of the hierarchy. Bevy's parent struct is a new type wrapping it around an entity, because in this particular type of hierarchy, it is not possible to have more than one parent. As of version 0.8, the enclosed entity has been made private to external crates. To access it, you must call the .get method or dereference it. If you need a copy or a reference to the enclosed entity respectively. The counterpart to the parent struct is the children struct. This struct is a new type wrapping around a, s a small vect that can hold up to eight entities in line before it will spill over and start allocating on the, the heap. This means much better performance for entities with less than or equal to eight children. Just like the parent struct, the wrapped value as of 0 0.8 has been made private to external crates. If you want to 
iterate over the children, you can simply do so by dereferencing it or calling iterator if you need an immutable reference to the array. Or if you are trying to reorder the children specifically to that set, you can use the swap method. But otherwise, you will have to use the command struct to add or remove children from an entity. Speaking of the command struct, it has a whole plethora of methods associated with changing and manipulating the hierarchy. With the changes made in 0.8, the hierarchy was made transactional. That, this means the hierarchy is more sound and cannot be desynchronized and only breaks if the programmer is doing something almost certainly deliberate, such as only removing one side of the component's pair relationship or adding default values and never assigning real ones. The big trade-off is that all methods to apply changes are now one directional, parent to child. This means it is not possible for you to set an entity's parent. You must instead instruct that parent that to set that as its child. This is done with one of the following methods on the command struct. Add child, which takes an entity and adds that as a child. Insert children, which will take an index and, ins and an array of entities and insert that into the children's uh, array. Push children, which will do the same, but appending to the end instead of specifying the location. Remove children, which will remove the, the array of children from the children's collection. With children, which will take a closure that requires a children builder and will allow you to more or less spawn children as you would with any other commands, spawning new entities into the world and inserting components, and add whatever entities that are support, spawned this way to the children's structure, and then add children, which will do the same, but will return a specified type. As seen, this entire collection of structures returns an entity type because the add children at the end will return whatever data type is returned by that closure. This would be useful if, for example, here, I am returning the ID of the last child I added, or I could return a vector of all the children added or any other information that I may have generated while spawning the children into the world can then be returned to be used by a different system without having to worry about adding those children to the uh, overlying entity. To get the functionality that you used to get from inserting the parent of a specific type onto an entity, you simply replace this line of code where you insert the parent struct with p inside it to be instead commands entity p getting a modification of parent and then adding the child to the parent. The command struct also has methods for removing entities that will be affected by or affect the hierarchy. Despawn to remove an entity from the world. Despawn descendants to remove all the entity's children from the world. And despawn recursive to both remove itself and all its children from the world. As of making this video, there is a bug that means that despawning an entity from a world will not remove its parent struct and therefore not reassign it as a root node when its parent is destroyed. I have filed a bug report already and hopefully this will be fixed in either 0.9 release or just the next bug patch of Bevy. But that is the end of this video. There is not really any examples that you can give for entities because it's not uh, really a visual thing, the hierarchy. Uh, but... Tune in for the next video, which will be on visibility, and please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I am making a lot of progress on my subscriber goals, and I will see you in the next video.